Today's pretty exciting because I finally get to review a figure I've had for quite some time. From the very popular DS game, The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, comes this, the Figma EX032 Link from A Link Between Worlds, the DX version. So this is actually a deluxe edition of another Figma, which was just the regular Figma of Link from the same game. Now the difference between the two is quite a few accessories. This has been done with a couple different figures, not terribly many, but when it does happen, they are typically worth buying because you get quite a bit more. I saw this and as a Zelda fan, I said, wow, that's actually a really nice figure and all those accessories make that look like a really fun figure. So I had to pick this up. Now, of course, like many Figmas, this is in a beautiful window display. This big square box shows everything right here at the front. You get a great shot of Link and all of his accessories, and of course, the branding on the box. There's a nice deep green, as well as this black that's all over the box, and I gotta say, it does a great job of conveying a bit of seriousness, even though this figure is kind of cute and whimsical. The top of the box, of course, has branding for Max Factory, Good Smile, Figma, and even the Zelda game in question. It shows Link with his hookshot, and he's got a nice serious face on. The side shows Link with this sort of helicopter wand, which is actually an accessory that you can get in the game. It allows Link to jump and sort of float around as if he could fly. The other side is a really nice looking shot of Link looking rather happy. He is presenting his shield as if he's ready for battle, but he looks rather satisfied to be there. And one thing that I don't know if you've noticed yet is this pattern. There's a Triforce pattern on the box all over in the black areas where the Triforce is actually somewhat embossed on there in gloss. And it's really nice. It's a great little detail that just makes these boxes look even so much nicer. Figma boxes are some of the nicest boxes. And of course the back is covered in plenty of accessory shots, showing him in all sorts of action poses with all the included accessories in the DX set. But now that I've gotten myself all excited, Let's open this thing up. Oh wow, and opening it up actually extends that flap to give you an even fuller shot of him with the tornado rod. The actual figure of Link himself looks incredible. It's incredibly clean and just really vibrant. There's a level of polish here that just doesn't really come with other figures. The sculpt is just nearly perfect, I would say. They were very smart in the way that they sculpted this so that he looks small, he looks young, but also incredibly shapely. I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. Look at the flow of the character. Now, this of course is part of his design as well. Look at his head. The hat and the hair and the ears are all nice and flared out. It creates a great bit of diversity when you then narrow it in to his neck. His shoulders then broaden, his waist dips in incredibly thin, and his tunic bellows out just a bit, almost like a skirt of course, and it then gets thin again with his legs going down to those nice chunky boots. And honestly, a figure like this hardly needs any painting. That's the one thing I love about Figmas is that they are made in a way and with plastics that look just perfect. The face is especially bright. Those big blue eyes of his are just gorgeous. All of his fair features really do allow them to depict just a happy looking character. He's young, he's lively, and he's happy. This is a character who's ready to go on an adventure. Another great thing is how responsive this figure is. All the joints are just tight enough, but not too tight to feel like it's cumbersome. There's such a great level of control that I just feel like doesn't come with a lot of other figures. And by now, this is a slightly old Figma, so it just goes to show how long the quality's been there. Come at me, bro. Another cool feature is the fact that he's wearing Ravio's bracelet. This is, of course, what allows him to turn into a painting in the game, so that's really neat. And the fact that it's a physical, movable bracelet is just a nice little additional bit of detail. And of course, this figure includes a Figma bag for you to hold all of these many accessories that he comes with, as well as a Figma stand, which is a perfect way to display him. It's a three hinged arm plugged into the stand that allows him to be displayed in quite a few different poses. And his stability is so great that you can actually stand him on his own without the stand. And speaking of stand, he stands at just a mere four inches tall, which is a bit smaller for a Figma, but I think for the quality here, I'm really not too mad about that. But funny enough, if you put him next to a character like Mari, he just barely clears her hips. But we're not going to judge Mari for that. Funny enough, let's start at the back of his head. For his hat actually has a single pivotable joint. It's a swivel, and it allows it to move in and out. It's helpful to make it look like it's either flowing, or you could push it straight down so that's not seen from behind. 
Now his head can go up and down, and of course his hair can get a bit in the way, and can even cause it to pop off, but you can roll his head around just as you might need to, it swivels just perfectly, and everything is just great. Now the posability of his arms are thanks to the ball joint that connects his shoulder into his armpit, so that allows it to really roll around and move as you need it. His elbow, of course, is on a hinge joint, which can go in and out. And of course, he can also be swiveled as well, but the bracer is actually making it hard to do. But yeah, you can obviously swivel it. Now his removable hands can go up and down, swivel, and can be rolled about in all different directions. These things are perfect. His waist can be swiveled, and it can also roll around quite a bit thanks to the fact that inside of there, there's a ball joint and there's that soft plastic of his uniform. And of course, this soft material extends to the bottom of his tunic, which allows his legs to also be used on their ball joints and swivel in and out, roll around, do everything you need. His knee is also on a simple pivotable hinge, which can go in and out, and it can be twisted just ever so gently. And at the bottom of his boot can be moved about on a ball joint as well, as well as the tip of his toe can also pivot upwards on a hinge joint. One thing that's annoying me quite a bit so far is that his hair just falls off way too easily, and his face even fell off pretty easily too when I first opened the box. So that's a bit of a pain in the butt. You could probably put some paper inside of the holes to keep everything fastened a bit tighter, but it is annoying to have to fix something as soon as you open it out of the box. But everything else works so well that I can't be too mad about it. Now, despite having tons of accessories, Link only comes with four pairs of hands. Bald fists are what come onto him as a default when you take him out of the box. Fight me, bro. Now, removing his hands will allow you to remove the bracer as well if you want to display him without it. Now, he also comes with a pair of open hands, which allow you to get a look at greatness with this pose. He could also play a pretty mean keyboard solo. He also comes with a pair of opened hands that have pegs inside of them, which would allow him to hold some of his accessories. Though these hands specifically seem to be catered for his bomb, because that's the only thing that has a peg hole in it. Still, it's a great way for him to hold the accessory in a very organic way. Though it does annoy me that you can't really move the bomb at different rotations and angles. Like the fuse is always going to be pointing the same way his hand is. And finally, he comes with a pair of gripping hands, which would allow him to hold some of his most iconic accessories. Most of his accessories do require a grip, so these hands are the most useful of the entire set. Firstly, this would allow him to hold his hook shot, which can impressively be shot quite a distance. This also allows him to hold his tornado rod, which you may be thinking, this looks a bit different than the way it was depicted on the box. That's simply because you must unlock the full potential of the tornado rod by, of course, taking out this piece of clear plastic. There's, of course, a graphic on there showing the blades rotating, and all you have to do is pop the cap off of the rod itself. Then, simply plug the cap into the center of the plastic, and then use the peg on the back to plug in the other piece of the rod. Now completed, it can all be plugged back into the handle. And just like that, Link can now fly. But of course, we're not forgetting the accessories that would make Link the hero that he's depicted to be. Now equipped with a far more intense stare, the hero is equipped with his Master Sword and Hylian Shield, and is ready for battle. The metallic shine to the handle and the blade and even the border of the shield and the other metal accents all look wonderful. These, of course, are the essential accessories for a character like Link, but man, they really do tie the figure together in the end. And of course, equipping him with that more serious face really does breathe a bit of heroic attitude into the figure. There's two accessories that I don't really know how to show without just showing them on camera. The first one is this Maya Mai, which is basically just a cute little snail creature. You have to collect them, they're hidden in the game. There's really nothing significant about this really, other than the fact that I guess you could kind of put it in a diorama with him or make him hold it. And I actually really like this rupee. It's cute, it's a sort of a transparent little plastic, but there's really no way for him to hold it other than just having it lay flat in his hands. So, I mean, that's a bit of a lost opportunity. And come on, a green rupee? This is the equivalent of a penny, get out of here. And quite possibly one of the most hilarious accessories is this pot, which is of course iconic because there's always pots in Zelda, and of course you just go into rooms and destroy them and try to find little rupees, but in this one, you could put a bomb in there. You could, I guess, put the Maya Mai in there too. 
Another funny feature of this figure is the fact that it comes with this little cutout of Link. This is to represent when he uses the power of the bracelet that he's wearing now to become a drawing? Yeah, so one of the ways that you moved around in the Zelda game was that you turned into this image of Link, very crudely drawn, and you could kind of climb along walls and in cracks and places that you normally couldn't get as a 3D character. This form is depicted on this clear plastic, similar to the propeller blade for his tornado rod, and of course, it actually comes with a unique way of displaying it. You can plug this bracket into the stand, and then it actually allows you to clip him inside of that. Now with him on the stand in this way, I guess you could do a lot of weird things. You could put him on your desk and make him move, or you can put him on the wall and make him move just like he does in the game. Again, a funny little accessory, but certainly appreciated for the fact that this was a pretty big part of the game. Now one thing I appreciate about this set is the engineering. All of his accessories are cleverly engineered in a way that would prevent you from being able to break them too easily, which of course is incredibly appreciated for an idiot like me. So check out his shield here, for example. How would you put this in his hand? Some might just try to squeeze his arm through that hole and then kind of wrap his plastic hand around the little handle here. I'm far too used to having to basically flex plastic around accessories to make characters hold things, but they make it a little bit easier on you here. You'll first unplug the little loop in the middle. Once that's done, that bracket can be used in the end to plug it back to his arm. But then the handle comes out as well. And of course, it can be used on either side to make him hold it in his left or right arm. And now the handle, you might think you could just kind of swivel through his hand, but it actually doesn't require that. They were a little bit smarter. And this may seem annoying to some, but it is actually an incredibly useful feature. The handle then breaks in two, and of course this part just plugs into the top of his grippable hand. This is also present with the Master Sword. You unplug the handle and then plug that through his hand to make him hold the sword. Most notable was the hook shot, because this one kind of surprised me. I thought he would have been able to just hold it, but you actually unplug the handle first, and then the handle actually again splits into two. This is something that a lot of companies get wrong, and thus a lot of people break accessories, so I always appreciate it when Max Factory does this. With one word, deluxe. They have absolutely described this set. This is the deluxe edition of a Figma. It comes with a lot of different things. Now, some people come to expect this already of Figma. Their figures are typically very poseable, customizable, and accessorizable, and they typically come with quite a bit of accessories, which is why I've always loved them. Funny enough, one of the first Figmas I ever bought was the Skyward Sword Link, mainly because I just wanted a Link figure. Unfortunately, Skyward Sword was awful and I hated that figure, but this one really does make me feel like I finally got the Link figure I wanted. Granted, A Link Between Worlds is not my favorite game, but this design is certainly lovable. The fact that it was a deluxe edition Figma was the main thing that kept me from reviewing it for so long. Having so many accessories and so many ways to pose him make him a nightmare for a creator because there's so much that I have to consider in actually making the video. I have to pose him a million different ways and talk about all these different accessories, and it just takes forever, but I'm glad I finally opened him because he's a great figure. I would proudly display this link in my collection, and the price now is actually better than it was originally. The DX version of this Figma will run you anywhere between $40 and $60, even for a real one. With Figma, you always need to be careful buying them because a lot of people do sell fakes, but this one seems to have kind of lost value over time. I think part of that is because they did actually sell it in America as well. I've seen these figures at like Best Buy even, so they probably just made a ton of them. I think I paid a lot more when I reserved him, so I'm kind of bitter about that. But yeah, if you're a Zelda fan and you like Link, or you just like really nice posable figures, this figure is right up your alley. I will give The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds Link Figma a solid 9 out of 10. This figure is almost perfect. I think for the original price point that I paid compared to what he came with, he was a bit expensive because I'm pretty sure he was somewhere around 80 to to $100. So I think he's wonderful, but I would have liked to have seen maybe just a little bit more accessories for the fact that he was a deluxe edition. But with that, what do you think? Do you like this figure? Do you have it? Why don't you comment below and tell me what you think? And of course, like the video if you did like the video. I'm going to go ahead and link something on screen, so make sure to check that out because it does help the channel. Even if you've seen it, just click it. It helps me out. 
Again, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing weekend and keep on collecting.